Hello, I'm Colin Harris from Nowhere, continuing the series on hooking up SAS in Excel. This is the fourth part of the series, talking about the fourth technique out of 11 on how to interface SAS and Excel. Here are the full 11, rain, 11 techniques that we're talking about through the series. And as I said, this is the fourth one, where we're going to talk about ODS, or Output Delivery System, and a range of different techniques we have clumped together here, including CSV, XML, HTML, and MS Office. So that's what this approach is, is Output Delivery System. For those of you who haven't heard of the Output Delivery System, you automatically will be using it, even though you may not be explicitly using it. It is what SAS uses to create the output, to go out to PDF file or to HTML or to wherever that output is going. Uh, we are using ODS statements to explicitly state how we want that output to go. But as I've already said, even if you don't see the word or use the word ODS, you are automatically using that under the covers. So we'll talk about the different types of ODS output. Here is we're talking about the CSV. Destination, that's how the ODS terms are. It said, what destination are you going to? So a CSV destination is creating CSV or comma separated values files. So this destination is creating that format. So we're not creating an XLS format spreadsheet here. We're creating a CSV file. What type of interface is this? It's a SAS push because SAS is controlling the creation of this data, pushing it out into a CSV file, and it's the data that is being transferred, not resulting procedure output, but data itself. What's it good for? Simple data transfer. We're talking about going here out to Excel, but CSV files are a common, or really a lowest common denominator for transferring data between different applications. So it could also be good for other things as well as creating Excel spreadsheets. And what it is doing is creating a new, or overwriting a SAS file, sorry, overwriting a, the file, the CSV file you're creating. Even though we're not creating an Excel format file, an XLS file, because it's being created in CSV format, Excel knows enough when it goes to open that file to display it for you and allow you to interact in that way. If you want it to be in a real XLS format file after you've got it to Excel, that's easy enough to do. You've opened up the CSV file and you can just say file, save as from within Excel and create it as a, a native XLS format. ODS HTML. Now people will use this technique for getting nicer looking Excel spreadsheets where you're delivering it to your manager or some other customers and you want it to look a bit nicer than those simple spreadsheets we've seen so far. So ODS HTML allows you to do that. However, if you are going to do that, we say don't use ODS HTML. There's a much better option, which is the MS Office 2K option. So that's what we'll get onto. Ignore OTS HTML. If you see people using that or you've seen example code, change to this next technique which is ODS MS Office 2K. It is also creating HTML format files which Excel can handle and display properly but it's creating them in a format that's specific for the MS Office products. So Word and Excel um, and it displays a much nicer result, so it's much better to use this option. In, type, in terms of type of technique, it's also a SAS push. So SAS is pushing the information out into the file that then Excel will pick up later. This is slightly different though. All the other techniques to date has been moving the data across. This technique is taking the output from a procedure. So that procedure output, whether it's a proc print or a proc tabulate or whatever, is being pushed out into the file and that is the resulting output is, is opened up and shown in Excel. What's this good for? Better looking output. Nicer, you can change the fonts, change the, the colors, change the a number of different things to get much nicer output. Next big advantage is it supports images and graphs which most of the other techniques don't. So a real big advantage of this technique. What it's doing is creating a new or overwriting the uh, resulting file, so it's not updating an existing file, it's creating a new or overwriting an existing file. 
Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So with the CSV example, very straightforward to use. If you haven't used ODS before, that's these ODS statements are the way you control ODS. So our first line at the top, ODS listing close. What that's doing is closing our current destination, which is typically the listing output, which goes to your results for your um, procedure output, or if you're using the display manager, the output window there, an enterprise guide, it's the results window. So this is saying we don't want the output to go there anymore. If you didn't use the statement, the output would continue to go to that location as well as to the file. And that may be fine, you may be happy to do that, but in most cases you say, no, don't direct the output to the existing output, we want it to go to our new location, which is the second line down, ODS CSV. Where is that output to go? The file is telling us where that is to go. In this case, we're creating a CSV file called carscsv.csv. And then we run our resulting procedure. We put a title on here, run the prop print, run that, and that would create our resulting file. It's a nice technique to close it off at the end. So we're saying ODS CSV close. That closes that CSV file so you can then use it outside of SAS and open up an Excel or whatever other application you're going to use it for. And to complete the picture, we're saying ODS listing. That means it's opening up again the output to go to the default listing location. And there's the result of a CSV file going through just a plain Excel spreadsheet, just like those earlier techniques we used, and we've got the data coming across. One thing you may note, if you're pretty quick, is that we used a title statement, and you'll note the title hasn't come through to show in the resulting spreadsheet. It is simply taking the variable names at the top, and then the resulting data is coming through. We'll note on our data values, on our um, dollar values here, we've got 36,945, the invoice amount is 33,000, and so on. So they are the, the correct, the result, the correct numbers coming through there. The reason I point that out is because in some of the earlier versions of SAS, or a not updated version in SAS, embedded commas in the numerical columns can cause problems. So it's a bit of a, a trap for young players, and we'll show you on the next slide the result that it can be. Um, so what you need to do to do that is update your tag set. How do you do that, you may say? That's fine, you just go to the SAS usage note number there, 10241, and that explains how to update the tag set or get your person who looks after your SAS environment to update the tag set as well. Okay, so if you do have an older version, this is what you can end up with. Remember, I showed you the correct result on the, a couple of slides ago, should have been 36,945. In this version with an older tag set, it's taken that comma as a delimiter and put the $36 in as one column and the $945 as another column. Not what we want. So that's the sort of result that you can end up with. So just be careful of that when you start creating CSV files. You're not ending up with incorrect results like this. Okay, let's move on to the HTML example. Remember I've said we don't want to use HTML um, as, a, as a, a technique, but I'm showing you what it creates for you anyway, so you've got the complete picture. Similarly, ODS statements to when we were doing CSV, now we're saying ODS HTML. The file we're creating, we say body equals, and creating a, a file here. Now what's interesting is even though it's an HTML file, we call it still .xls. That means that Excel will know to open it up, and it will look inside and say, oh, this is HTML, and it will display it appropriately. So it's a bit of, again, a bit of a trick there to know to still call it XLS as the file name. Because it's HTML now, we can start to use styles. So I've got there style equals Barrett's Blue, one of the standard styles with SAS. And if you're not familiar with styles, there's a whole range of dozens of different styles that come automatically with SAS, and you can just use those styles to get a quite a different look for the output. You can create your own styles, which is very nice as well. So you can create your own corporate style, which if you come work for the company ABC, you can have it branded with the ABC logo and the appropriate colors and so on, which is a very nice thing to be able to do. So we've got a title here, we've got our prop print, 
and again closing off the ODS statements at the end. How does that look? Well, looks a bit different than the standard simple data. It's now got a change in colour, a change of font. You'll notice the title is now coming through here as well. And it looks OK. Um, you'd want to tidy it up a little bit, but it certainly allows you to, to pretty it up somewhat. Not as good as the next uh, destination, so we'll move on to that. That is now using the MS Office 2K destination. And we refer to that slightly differently. ODS tag sets. By saying tag sets, we're saying go off and get a particular tag set, which is a way to, to, to tell it how to create the output file. So the tag set we're saying here is MS Office 2K. The file we're creating, we're creating a file, and again we, we're using the suffix .xls. Even though it's HTML we're creating, we're telling it to call the file .xls. We can use the style again, and we've chosen the same style here, Barrett's Blue, put a title on, and done that same prop print. Let's run that, and now the result, I'm sure you'll agree, looks much, much nicer than that standard default HTML output. Remember, this is the style that is customised, or the, the um, MS Office 2K is customised for creating better output in Office applications. So the title is shown, as we can see, and then the resulting data down below, much, much nicer to actually look at. OK, advantages and disadvantages. The ODS CSV file format, what's that good for? It's good for simple data. All Excel versions, some of the other techniques don't work in earlier Excel versions. So ODS CS, or the CSV formats are certainly can be consumed by all Excel versions. Another advantage is its small size. CSV is the smallest file format that's created. That's because it's purely the data that's being written out into that, for, into that file. It's not having to write any of the formatting stuff. Simply the data is being transferred. What's the downsides of this technique? It's just a simple, plain output, not nicely formatted at all. Um, just simple, plain data moving across into the Excel spreadsheet. I don't even talk about the pros and cons of the HTML output, because we see do not use that. But the MS Office 2K format, what's the advantages there? Nicer output. You can get your different star, your different fonts, your different colors, etc. Embedded images and graphs, a real big advantage of this particular output type. And you can use the SAS styles. What's the downside here? It's still an HTML file rather than a real native XLS file. So that's got some limitations. It's a larger file because it includes the different formatting that's required. And the current version doesn't allow multi-sheets. And a lot of you, a lot of your customers and you like to have different worksheets. This doesn't allow you to do that. But there is a new version of this particular destination that's available on the SAS website called the MS Office 2K underscore X. That's for experimental. So that allows you to do multi-sheets. So you may want to download that and use that technique. Downside is just in comparison as well. Even though it allows you to do some formatting, it doesn't allow you to format anywhere near as much as the Excel XP technique, and that's the technique we talk about next in the series, not as part of this particular video. Thanks for watching this video, which is part of a series on hooking up SAS in Excel. The full PowerPoint presentation is available at nowhere.co.nz, which includes references to good papers that provide more details.